What's your job market prediction for 2025? I've been applying to internships. Do you think it's futile to still apply from them? Uh, Harvard versus MIT, Georgia Tech versus John Hopkins, ASU versus CSU, how much money to bring in while coming to the US? These are all the questions I got asked on my Instagram. I'm gonna answer these in this video. So let's just get into it. First question, what's your job market prediction for 2025? It's hard to say right now because in 2022, they hired a lot of people, but second half of 22, they fired a lot of people. Maybe after the election's over, they will be hiring again. But also since AI came in, I think the productivity has increased per person. So it's hard to say what's going to be the job predictions for next year. Seeing that Amazon has laid off a lot of people, it's just overall hard and I don't want to give hopes to anyone. Um, as of right now, setting in fall 2024 or not even fall Q2 2024, it's hard to say for next year. I'm finding an apartment in Tempe, Arizona. I need some advice coming this fall. If you're trying to find an apartment anywhere, this is what you need to do. I think you need to go to WhatsApp groups for different universities. You need to find it on Redfin, Zillow, apartmentlist.com. These are the four or five websites where you'll be able to find something. Also, if you're able to be in contact with some of your seniors, those guys will be able to help you out finding apartments which are more relevant to the international audience. So it doesn't matter if you're coming to ASU or Georgia Tech or San Jose State, seniors are going to be able to help you shortlist that apartment list where you need to be applying to or where you need to go. But if you know that you have gotten an admit, I would move really fast on apartments because the good apartments get sold off really quickly. Which type of company can allocate H1B visa and how do I know that they can give H1B visa? There's a website called myvisajobs.com. Myvisajobs.com is a free website. So as to say there's premium versions of it also, but it's a free website where you can go and you can look up any of the companies which has offered H1B visa before. So let's say you search a company like Acom or JLL or JE Dunn, for example, these are all construction companies I'm referring to. Uh, but if you go look up, you will be able to see every year how many H1B applications they have put in, how many green card applications they have put in. So it's really easy to go through that. I'm gonna leave that link in the description. So it's called myvisajobs.com. Fourth question, I've been applying for internships. Do you think it's futile to still apply for them? So I know you might be a little disappointed that you have been applying for internships for this long and you still haven't gotten any. I would still encourage you to apply for it. Why? Because you never know. Sometimes, most of the times, each of the company has positions to fill in. If they don't fill all, fill all of those positions or some people have backed out last minute, they still have those positions to fill for internship. And maybe since you're applying until the last moment, it will help you get into those company um, and all, you know it doesn't matter if the summer has started sometimes you don't have to do all three months of internships you can still do two months of internships and maybe a startup is looking for an intern which you are the correct intern uh, at that point of time so i would encourage keep applying for internships until the last moment i think june would be mid june would be the would be a great time to just cut off and focus on other things at that point of time. Uh, fifth question, Georgia Tech versus JHU for biomedical engineering. So JHU is John Hopkins University. I'm gonna be taking some of these questions as well, comparing two universities and what my thought process is. Georgia Tech versus John Hopkins. It's very difficult for me to say which one is better for biomedical, but what I would do is I would do a cost benefit analysis. I would see which university is better um, I think John Hopkins is a better school for pre-med, medical in general. So biomedical will have more opportunities just because their medical school is really good as compared to Georgia Tech. Um, so I would do that. I would do a cost benefit analysis, what my fees is going to be if I'm, if I'm getting any kind of scholarships at John Hopkins and see which is the best option for you. Uh, as a person who doesn't know anything about biomedical, I wouldn't be able to help you. Uh, but there's a girl who makes videos on YouTube. I'm going to leave that link in description. She also does her biomedical engineering from Cornell. I think she has shared some of the list of all the universities for biomedical. Maybe she has some videos which can be able 
which will be able to help you out. Um, her Instagram name was Crazy Medusa, but I think her real name is Niharika. So you can check it out. Harvard and MIT, MS in Cybersecurity, uh, right now studying BSc Honors in Digital Forensic Science. So whoever put this question in Instagram, congratulations, first of all, both are great options. Um, I don't really play along in the Harvard MIT game. So, you know, take a decision what your gut feeling say, especially since you have gotten into cybersecurity. These are top schools. So I would say MIT is better for engineering than Harvard. But again, my, um, my teachings and my learnings and my ability to give a decision on this is really difficult. I would let you take the decision as just it's just two top universities. I would like if I'm considering, I would consider the brand value what sells more, but you would have to see what coursework is better, uh, whether if it's Harvard or MIT. I got an in principles action letter from the bank. Can I submit this to my university for I-20? Yes, you can. The I-20 bar. So if you're submitting any kind of funding documents to your university for your I-20, that bar is really low. So anything which shows that you have one year of your funding, they will be able to release your IT in 20, no problem. So this in principle sanction letter is great. This letter is also great for your visa application. They wouldn't really care as long as it's called out on the letter of the bank that you will be able to get this loan. There's no problem and you will be able to get that I-20. I also have made a video about I-20. I'm going to leave that link in the description. How much were you spending in a month when you were just working, when you just started working? So at that time, I think my first expenses were really a lot because I had to set up a whole apartment. I also get got a little bit of money. So me and my roommate went out and got crazy at Walmart and Ikea, just shopped a lot, got a bed frame, got a mattress, uh, got everything for kitchen. We spent like eight, nine hundred dollars on Walmart among two of us at the first time. But my rent during that time was just around less than thousand. I think it was like eight, nine hundred dollars, including Wi-Fi, electricity in Phoenix. Now the rents have gone up a lot. So I was spending that and then I was spending um, four hundred dollars in my car, hundred and twenty dollars in my insurance. So eight hundred, eight, nine hundred, four hundred, one fifty. That's almost uh, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. And then I was spending eating out. Uh, I was also like driving to different project sites at that time because I work in construction. So it was taking a lot of like, I was spending a lot of money on my mileage and then I would stop at gas stations to take some energy drinks So and eat out as well. So I would say all in all, I would be spending at least $2,000 per month when I just started working. Now that I do own a house and you know, um, I have a bunch of pets, my per month spending has gone up for sure. Uh, but Initially, when you're starting off as much as you can put down in loan, that will be the best case scenario for you. ASU versus CSU for MS in construction management. I don't know California State University that much, but I know ASU is really good for construction management. Maybe the course is like heavily um, just Indian population, but Phoenix is a big booming market for construction in general. So that's why ASU might be a better option right now. How much money to bring when coming to US for study? I tell everyone that, you know, you should consider your fees, your first and second month expenses. So let's say your rent is four, five, six hundred, maybe a thousand dollars, and then you'll be spending another two, three hundred or four hundred dollars in miscellaneous expenses. Plus you will have like some startup cost, right? You'll be setting up your apartment. You might have to pay some deposits. So consider all of those factors and then get uh, the amount of money which you have to. I've made a video about that. I'm going to leave that link in description. Uh, but how much hard cash you should be bringing? I think $500 to $1,000 is more than enough. And anything else you can always have in Forex. I always tell everybody that bring some money in cash. Why? Because, um, you know, sometimes you don't know if your Forex has some kind of limit. They might not, they might work, they might not work at places and that's when having cash will be helpful. Carnegie Mellon versus Georgia Tech. So this person has asked me a question about Carnegie Mellon versus Georgia Tech. It's hard for me to answer when I don't know what the reference is, what the course is, but Carnegie Mellon is like a really good CMU is a really good university. 
uh, Georgia Tech is a great university as well. Great opportunities around Atlanta. Both has great brand value. I think Georgia Tech might be a little cheaper than Carnegie Mellon. Um, I would prefer Carnegie Mellon. Brand value is amazing for CMU, no doubt about it. Another question about ranking is, or another question about comparing universities, Purdue Fort Wayne versus Stevens Tech. So Stevens Tech is a great university for computer science, no doubt about it. I would go there because New Jersey has a lot more opportunities. New York is right there, so a lot more opportunities. It's it's like almost double the price of Purdue Fort Wayne. Um, the good thing about Purdue Fort Wayne is that you still get the Purdue University degree. It never says anywhere that it's a Fort Wayne campus. But I would say Stevens has a lot more opportunities, especially if you're going for a tech field right now. Columbia University versus Georgia Tech for civil engineering. Georgia Tech is a great university for civil engineering. I wouldn't want you to spend so much money in Columbia when you would end up in AECOM or you would end up in Jacobs Engineering doing structural. The one good thing about Columbia is, of course, it's the Ivy League, so the brand name is always attached to you. There would be some like structural firms in New York, which only hire from Columbia, and you know you you are able to get into those firms with Columbia. So that brand value is amazing. But you will be able to save a lot more money when you go to Georgia Tech as compared to Columbia, because living is cheaper in Atlanta versus New York. Uh, but civil engineering is great at both of the colleges. Like if I would have gotten into either of these colleges, I would be so ecstatic about it. Another comparison, ASU versus Purdue for MS in Business Analytics. Both are great colleges. I have a bias against Purdue, right? But if you're going to the main campus, their management program is amazing. Uh, they recently changed their management program's name or the management school's name. And the business analytics is great. The brand value is great. Um, there's not a lot enough there's not a lot of opportunities when it comes to Purdue because it's a college town as compared to ASU uh, you know which is a beautiful campus middle of Phoenix right in Tempe so um, I think Purdue is a better school but the brand is also better um, I think cost wise both are the same thank you so much hope you enjoyed if you have more questions please please share that on Instagram and follow me there because I do Q&A's like this all the time and then you can always put out the questions in the comment here as well and I'll be able to answer all of them for you.